In this part three of our car modeling series, we're going to carry on creating our concept car using plasticity, so stay tuned. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to carry on with our car modeling series in plasticity, and we're going to carry on from the last video where we did the major portion of the side of the body, and we began adding a wheel flare, basically the section where it's going from our wheel arch and it's flaring down to the rest of the car. Now, this is very bubbly and it doesn't look great, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a complete loss. Uh, it means that we can do a little bit more work, we can make it look a bit cooler, but right now it just doesn't kinda, it doesn't really have the look that I'm going for. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get started by first selecting all the faces we created. I'm gonna go ahead and work my way over here. Rotate this around. And we're gonna do Alt-J. Now what Alt-J will do is it'll allow us to get rid of that and hide it. And then what we can do is we can start to create our own flare. Uh, so basically recreate it, do another one. And before I get to that point, I, I want to address this section here. Uh, so I don't really like what's happening here. So I'm going to do Alt and J on that as well. I'm going to hide it. I don't necessarily know if I need it or not. But from that fillet, we're going to go to our edge selection. And I want to go from here down to the bottom and create a loft. Now at the bottom, I don't really, I'm not really worried about tangency. But as I mentioned before, when we did this one, it was straight up and down. It was perfectly fine because this one actually has some shape to it. It's going to be problematic. We can't just use a loft with tangency because it's not going to go the right direction. So the way that we need to build this is with a blend curve. I'm going to start from here and let's rotate this around. And I'm going to come down to this edge. And let's bring back our all selection so we can see the vertices. I'm going to go to zero on that, to one on that, G1 continuity, and that looks a bit better. So what we can see here from the side, it is traveling the direction we want it to, so right click to accept, and we'll repeat that process. So we'll go from there down to here. This one is going to be at 1.0, this one will be at 1.0. We'll do G1 for both of them, and we'll say OK. So now what this allows us to do is with our edge selection, we can loft from top to bottom again. The bottom is going to be G0 continuity, and we're going to use these as our guides. So now that gets us that flare that, or that, that shape that we want. So I'm going to hide this. I don't know if I need it. I'm going to hide the curves just in case, but I do want to join these together. So when we look at it from the side, it still kind of looks the same, but from the back, it's a much more gradual taper. And now we can start defining what the shape is going to look like. So I've sort of divided up this in a couple of sections. So using my edge selection, I'm just going to try to loft between these again. I don't really want tangency here, but I'm looking at the rest of that blended shape. And I like the way it looks. I'm going to try G2 continuity. Now G1 is going to be just tangency direction. G2 will actually take into account the radius of curvature. The problem that we're going to run into is maybe down here it might create an inflection. So G1 is probably going to be our best bet. Let's just double check over here. And really what I'm looking to see, I want to make sure that this edge doesn't drop below. I don't want it to dip in and then come back out. Uh, one thing that I could do is instead of using uh, 1.0 for my continuity, I can reduce these values to say a 0.5. And that's going to lessen the influence it has. Uh, this first one doesn't matter because that first edge is G0, just connected. But that will keep us from dipping back here. I think that looks okay. So I'm going to accept that. And if we take a look at the other bulge, so you can kind of see that's the first one we made and the second one kind of get an idea of, of the difference between that shape. And I like this blended shape a little bit better. I'm probably going to end up rounding this off, probably with a fillet at the end, but I like that shape a bit better. 
Another thing that I want to do is this transition here. I'm okay with it down here, but I really don't like the, the sharp transition. It's straight down and then back. Um, so I do want to take care of that. I'm going to hide the wheel. The wheel's not really important to what we're doing. That'll maybe give us a little bit better visibility. So I'm going to take this section and Alt and J, just like we did before. We'll hide it. And then we will once again use Bridge Curve. And we'll go down to the bottom here. That'll be one. This will be one. We use G1 Continuity. Say OK. And repeat the process. So this will be zero in this case based on where we selected. This one will be one. And again, we'll use G1 Continuity. So now with our edge selections, we can loft from top to bottom. Bottom will be G0 and then we'll just use our guides. We'll hide this in case we need it again. We'll hide those. We can do a little bit of cleanup afterwards and then we'll join these together. So now this shape looks a bit more like this shape here. It's a little bit better. The fillet is gonna disappear because this all has a nice smooth flat transition, which is fine because it's gonna, that's how we essentially want it. If we wanted to mimic that a bit more, what we could do is a harder transition here and add a fillet and, and allow them to blend together. Not really something I want to do at this point, but I think we're moving in the right direction. I think I like the shape a bit better. So I want to create, let's do a blended curve at the bottom. Uh, here is not going to matter. We'll do G0 on the end. We'll do one here. We'll do G1. And we're going to set the tension to 0.5 and right click to accept. Now, hopefully if we're lucky, we'll be able to loft between these and we won't have to do a bunch of those intermediate steps. So let's give it a shot with our edge selection. We're going to loft from here to here and then we'll hold down shift and we'll hold down shift over here. We want this one to be G0. We want tangency at the main body of the car. And then we'll get rid of this at the bottom. So that looked like it blended okay. Remember that curve we created at the bottom, we reduced the, the tension to 0.5 instead of one, which is the same thing we did when we lofted this. I'm gonna go ahead and just join these together and just do a quick visual check. So I wanna to toggle off my edges. I think that looks pretty good. Yeah, I like that shape a lot better than the bubble that we had. The bubble looks very much like a, you know, a Volkswagen Beetle. Doesn't really work for this. So I'm going to just delete that altogether. We don't need it. But I like that shape. One thing I could do is carry this blend further out into the car body. So maybe bring it forward and then back. But I don't really think it's worth it for this video series, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go down that path and, and get get caught up in that. But let's go ahead and do a bridge curve back here. Uh, again, at the end is G zero. Start is G one. And set that to zero. Tension to 0.5, and then we will use our edges and we'll try to loft between these two. We we'll use these as a guide and these as a guide. This one will be G0. Go back to our all selection and just join everything together. So once again, just double check, hide the edges. And it doesn't look too bad. You can kind of see that blend carrying into the fender flare. And let's look at it from the side. So that looks pretty good. So I'm pretty happy with that. It's pretty aggressive, but that's okay. And now we kind of have to go on to the front. So let's go back, show our edges and move our way to the front. Uh, I'm going to do, let's do a mid save and I'm going to increment this because this is video three. I'm just going to add a three here and then we can repeat the process at the front. So again, we need to think about the fender flare and where 
that wheel arch is going to start to taper back. Because right now, I think that it needs to follow the body line. Might be okay on the back side, but I really think that it needs to kind of work its way in. So from a side, what I'm going to do is just create a line from here to here. We'll do the same thing on this one. And then Shift and I to imprint. And we'll do the same thing here, Shift I to imprint. Uh, for the wheel, I don't need to see it, so I'm going to hide it, get rid of these curves. And basically all I'm trying to do is break up this arch. So I'm going to select this bottom piece, Alt and J. The same thing over here, Alt and J. And that way I can kind of move them back where I need to. So G and X. And this one here, I'm going to get a little bit closer to the body. All, all I'm really looking for is where that bottom edge is. And same thing up front, so G and X, figure out where the bottom of the body is. Maybe put it somewhere like that. So that way it'll give us something to blend to. And we'll worry about that in just a second. We still need to cut away the rest of the fender shape, but I'm gonna do a blend curve. We'll go from here to this one. So that's gonna be at uh, zero. This one will be at zero. G zero continuity on our second selection and G1 on our first, and then we'll repeat that process. So here to here, this one will be at 1.0. This one will be at 1.0 as well, G0, G1. And to our edge selection, we'll just create a loft. G0 at the bottom, and then just select both of our guides, and then we can get rid of those. So again, the main thing, the main reason we did this is because we want to maintain that shape, but we also want it to blend back into the body. So we got to do the same thing at the back. Bridge curve, G1, G0. This is going to be one. This is going to be one. And then repeat the process. So as you can kind of see, Bridge curve is a pretty common tool that we're going to be using, making sure that we understand continuity. Uh, the edge selection, we want to make sure that we are sort of comfortable lofting from one to the other, selecting those, and getting rid of that, and getting rid of that. Whoops. Getting rid of that. Now we can join these together. Once again, they don't have to be joined together, but it, it can be helpful. So we got a bunch of extra little surfaces from the back. I'm gonna delete them because I don't really need to see them. And now I need to decide how this front wheel arch is gonna blend into the rest. And at the back, we did a fairly simple shape where we just took the shape of the wheel and we kind of expanded it out. I wanna do something a little bit more elaborate, which I may regret, but I am going to I want to start by making it a true arc here. So I'm going to duplicate that. So shift D and then scale it out until it's relatively close to that top edge. And then instead of wrapping it back under like we have here, I'm just going to take this and I want it to be somewhat tangent. So what we're going to end up doing is making either bridge vertex or bridge curve. So I'll just go from here to here. This one's gonna be at 1.0. G1 continuity can be G0 at the end. Right click to accept. Because we have trim, it will get rid of the entire curve. So when we set that to 1.0, it'll get rid of that entire curve. So G0. And then we need to join these together. So select these three curves, J for join, and then C to cut. That, when I cut, that means this inside piece can just be uh, deleted and I can delete this curve. I don't actually need it. So now this is where we're gonna blend. And I'm gonna start by, by blending the top. So go from here to here, we'll loft G0 at the, the arch. G1 back here, but again, we're gonna change the tension to 0.5. 
and it's this one here. So from the front, they have very similar shapes. And then now we have to kind of figure out what happens down here. So we'll do a blend uh, bridge curve, G0 on that one, G1 here, set it to zero, change my selections back to all, and we'll do the same thing here. So bridge curve. So obviously if you're doing this quite a bit, then setting up a shortcut key for bridge curve is probably in your best interest. So any of the tools that you use constantly, uh, bridge curve or rebuild or whatever, uh, it makes sense to set those up. I generally don't worry about it. Um, I'm not usually modeling under a time crunch, so I, I don't care too much about coming over here to click in, in most cases. But let's go ahead and create a loft from here to here, see if we can get lucky. So shift select all the edges on the side and we'll do the same thing over here, making this G0. And that looks okay. So get rid of that edge at the bottom. And let's try this on the back as well. Maybe we'll get lucky here as well. So again, hold down shift, grab all these edges, G0 at the arch. And I think we lucked out there as well. So back to our all selection and we'll kind of join everything together. J and J. All right, so once again, let's hide the edges and just take a quick look at what we've done. I'm gonna take this entire thing and mirror it to the other side just so we can kind of get a feel for it. Uh, make sure that we are looking at it with perspective, which is um, five on the keyboard. So if you look at it from the front, you would wanna see it sort of twisted like that. So I think that looks pretty good. I mean, obviously we could spend a ton of time getting this to work, but I think blending these down at almost the same sort of shape works pretty well because then what we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna build a side skirt that goes from here to here, and that's gonna end up cutting into the side of the body a little bit. Uh, so that side skirt is gonna help us with some of that blend. I think that probably keeping the front and rear flare is very similar would be best for a concept you know so flaring these ones out probably should have done the rear the same but uh, again it's it's just a concept we can always change our mind and make changes later maybe taking this all the way out to the front in the front would be a good idea but i'm not too worried about making changes right now um, i think this is a great starting point I want to try to keep these videos between 20 and 30 minutes and not get too bogged down on a lot of details. Since we're right at about the 20 minute mark, I think that's a good place for us to stop. But I am going to lead into the next video slightly. So if you want to continue to play around, you can. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to use a line to go from one wheel arch to the other. And this is going to be sort of the defining shape of the side skirt. So we want this to, let's see, we'll rebuild this. We're gonna scale this a little bit closer together, GG to kind of bring it up. And we're gonna use this as sort of the defining line and we can make it more aggressive if you want to, but um, this is sort of the defining line for that lower wheel arch. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this as the bottom edge and we're going to make one a bit higher, I think. Um, as I've mentioned, probably in this video and the others, we're going through this in real time together. So I don't, I haven't pre-modeled this car at all. We're just kind of exploring the shapes because that's what we end up doing. Now, uh, that's kind of why I didn't want to do this series with a blueprint and trying to replicate a real car. Because in most cases, you're probably making your own designs as opposed to trying to model something that already exists. There are plenty of different software packages out there that you can use to model cars or model pretty much anything. And the benefit of plasticity is really in its ability to be non-committal. Like it's, it's a direct modeling approach. So we can make stuff, kind of see what sticks, delete it, try again, and so on. 
So that's the main reason why we want to use plasticity for something like this. It's not, I'm not going to lie, it's not the easiest program to model a car with. There are intricacies, that, things that we need to sort of know and work on, but it still does give us the freedom to make these shapes. So we're going to scale these together, G, Y, maybe put them back here. And what I'm doing is I'm moving these in X, kind of pulling them in a little bit because I don't want it to just be a straight line. But uh, once again, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of figure this out next time. But let's go ahead and do a quick patch just to make a surface in there so we can kind of get a get an idea. I don't know if this is truly it, so I'm going to hide these curves instead of deleting them. But it gives you an idea of the shape if we hide the edges and so you can kind of see what we're working with. Um, it's not connected, the, the upper edge is just open there, so we still have work to do in terms of building that shape out. But it does give you an idea when you look at it from the side, kind of what we're doing. So I'm going to go back to that clay model, it gives us a pretty good look. Okay, well, so that's it for this video. I know I just spent the last couple minutes rambling, but if you have any questions on what you've seen so far, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.